In this video, Manuel discusses his recollections of Ernest Jones. What you remember of Ernest Jones? It's a long time ago, but I'm just curious. What do you recall from... from His writer's paper. Uh, in terms of um, your experience with him or your dad's experience with him, um, well, what was that like? With my dad and, and Ernest Jones, we were at each other's house all the time. Mm -hmm. And they just tore the string apart and then put it back together again. And the things that they talked about when I was six and seven years old, I could understand. Today, when they talk about the string, I don't understand what they're talking about. But Ernest Jones... developed this concept because he wanted to continue playing golf after he lost his leg. Mm -hmm. okay. And he felt that he should be able to play golf even though he, he didn't have the right leg. And he did. And you know, you you read it. The first time he played, he almost broke 80. Yeah. Okay. Actually, he hadn't played by being in the service. And then he met in one of the tournaments in, in England. And they, they, they struck a very close friendship. And I went to see him teach one, one time. In, as an, when our, our meet, PG meeting was in Atlantic City, I stopped in New York and stopped to watch him teach. And he was teaching a gentleman who told him, I don't know what happened to my string, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And Ernest Jones said, don't worry about your offspring, you don't have one. <laughs> okay. So they worked together and while he was teaching this gentleman, a lady came in. And I said to her, she was a pretty young lady, not pretty in terms of looks, but pretty young. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I asked her, why are you coming to Ernest Jones? And he said, she said to me, he's my last hope. I've gone to all the teachers in, in, in the area and I can't hit the golf ball. So I said to her, when you get through with your lesson, I'd like to ask you a question, so please come and see me. So they put together, and this was the procedure for Ernest Jones. He starts talking to her and have, has her make a few swings. And he said to her, do you dance? And she said, oh, yes, I, I dance all the time. I love to dance. And he said to her, well, let's dance. So he had a little cubby hole in the back, in, in the back of where, where the range was. And he had a, a gramophone, you know what that is. Mm -hmm. And he had the blue Danny one. You know. So he went back there and turned it on. And he said to her, let's just dance. So he had her grip the club this way. And he held it in the middle and just... Da -da 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 -da. And then she said, okay. He said, let's grip it the other way, at the head end. And let's do the same thing. So he had the club here and this, and this, this way. Now let's grip it the normal way and let's do the same thing. Now Ernest Jones never teed the ball up. Even he was on the, on the mat. Never teed the ball up. Well, after she did what he asked her to dance and then she then there's no feeling of golf or anything. See, he said to her, "No, there's a ball there. Let's just dance." And in five seconds, he had her hitting the ball off the, the mat in the air. And that's all he told her. So when she finished, she came over to me and, and I said, what do you think about the lesson? And she said to me, I never thought that the golf could be this much fun. Wow. And that's just, just that half hour. So when you are able to convince people of the real truth of the swing, their successes are really, really terrific. It's just like with you. When you really convince yourself that you're going to see that club there and you do it, you don't hit a bad shot, ever. And my dad, just like I said, remember that a swing in motion never hits a crooked shot. If you hit a crooked shot, it means you've destroyed your swing. 